Just want to say, first and foremost, Alex, thank you very much for the invitation to be here. Um, this is awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it, it's funny. I, I think I came in tonight with a mind of what I was going to talk about, but listening to some of the speakers tonight, I'm going to do a little bit of a pivot. I'm just going to talk about a couple of things. We've just come through Black Friday, Cyber Monday. I don't know if anyone else in the crowd, maybe a show of hands, who's potentially a bit tired today as a result of the weekend that was. Yes, hello, everyone. Um, I, too, am tired, and my family hasn't seen me for a week. But it's good. I'm here. I think I'm talking. Um, I want to talk about what it's like working at a nearly 100-year-old retailer in an era of e-commerce and transformation. And I can throw out every cliche every buzzword, and we can talk about anything we want. But really, at the end of the day, what we are talking about, and the theme I've heard tonight over and over, is how does the experience that has been around for thousands of years live and become the experience that we have in the future? And I think when you think of what Canadian Tire is a corporation and what we have emphasized, thank you, got there eventually. Um, I told you I'm tired. Um, it's really, it's about the customer, and it does come down to the customer. Another cliche, but it's like, okay, how do you understand the customer? How do you understand what they're doing? Where we have spent our time over the last little while is really, it's understanding not only the e-commerce piece, but how e-commerce impacts the customer's journey, and what happens when the customer purchases online. Are they more apt to visit you in store? Are they, are they you know, the, does a customer really need to click on an ad for it to be effective? And how would I know that? And does a customer get lost in the era where you have this horrible measurement system like last click? It is absolutely the most garbage, useless, and still somehow hanging around attribution model in the business. And people actually make decisions on it. And it's horrifying. Um, you know, there's no way in the world that some of the great work that we do on brand doesn't have an impact. So how do you understand that? And how do you actually do the right things for your business to be able to deliver growth? regardless of what channel it's in. So first and foremost, measurement sucks today, digital. It just does. And I think that the companies that are going to stand out, thank you very much, thank you, thank you. Um, the companies that stand out, though, they really have, they, they have their shit together when it comes to what is it that they are actually trying to accomplish. And then knowing that, how am I actually going to put something in place to measure whether or not I did a good job of that? then how does that actually then have an impact on the customer? So first and foremost, you start to think of experimentation. Now, if you have first-party data, obviously you're using your first-party data, you're potentially using platforms, you're moving it around. Maybe you've brought on a CDP, maybe you're using next-generation AI. Whatever it is, though, you understand your customer, and you have an idea of how you're going to experience and how that customer experience should look for you as well. Um, but let's say you don't have first-party data. Let's say you're not, uh, there's no loyalty programs, there's no credit data, there's no anything. You, you're a startup and you're trying to figure out how to do it. You still need to have a mind to the same notion, which is when I do something, am I creating an impact? Am I making a dent? Or am I literally capturing people that would have come to me anyway and I'm wasting my money? So these are the questions that we grapple with. And whether or not you're a 97-year-old retailer who is trying to um, forge ahead and transform their customer experiences, or whether or not you are um, thinking about what kind of startup you're going to launch, I think that the question is the same, which is how is the work that I create and the great work that we do as agencies uh, or clients or you know, vendors, how does that actually create change and how do I evaluate it? Experimentation, trying things, test markets, geos, all these sorts of things are critical. The other thing that we have to keep mind of, though, is we get a little short-term focus sometimes. And sometimes we get a little bit hung up on transactions, and we start pe seeing people as dollar signs. And we go to the one who's got their cash in their hand and say, I want to talk to you first. But I think the important thing as we transform is to get deeper relationships with our customers. We can't think of them as transactions and as dollar signs. We need to actually think of them as people and human beings. And the work that we do, whether it be targeting, whether it be creative, which is so, so overlooked when we talk about ad tech, when we talk about everything we talk about, creative, what do you actually want to say to the customer when you finally get them? You don't want to be like a dog chasing a car, and yes, I've got it, and I've got the car, and I have no idea what to say to you, or I throw a horrible 
piece of dynamic creative at you that looks like garbage. I don't want to do that. I want to take that opportunity of when I get you, and I want to show you something that actually creates or makes you think something different about me. And I think that's the transformation we're all on. So in the world of Canadian Tire, we've been moving extremely quickly across all of our banners to learn, to be agile, to try different things, to see how we can positively impact the customer experience. And if we learn something, we roll it across our, our organization, but we have a constant feedback mechanism. We keep working. So if I were to sort of leave, um, leave you here with one thing is to say is the technology is an amazing tool and it, these are enablers. We need them. Technology is what gives us an edge and it helps us be better. Data that is our own, that we cultivate, is our advantage, but also in the marketplaces can be commoditized. Content is your differentiator, your message is your differentiator, and your experience that you deliver as a brand. So if I were to leave you with anything, it is be mindful of the long term. Think about, if you're larger, think about your NPS, think about your measurement, think about your feedback, think about your customer. Keep in mind what it is that you're trying to accomplish with your technology with your campaigns, whatever it may be, and have the right type of test and learn, test and control methodologies in place to get you there. Um, I think that those are the things when I talk to people that have concepts, ideas, products, companies, something to pitch, it is how is that going to meaningfully impact my customer experience? And then how do we test that and how do we learn? So I think that's it. I got the one minute sign. Thank you very much for your time. I'll be happy to take any questions. Thanks for that, Greg. Uh, question for Canadian Tire, what are you guys doing right now to future-proof your business? And what's an example you could use for other enterprise companies that are trying to future-proof theirs? That's a really great question. Thank you for that. Um, I think that future-proofing for us, and the most important thing, is understanding how the customer is seeing you. When we talk about things like NPS, it's like, how are we actually gathering the right intelligence around how a customer feels about an in-store experience, how they feel when they're going through your store, when they check out? What does your website look like? Can they get the information they want? Would they recommend you to a friend? I think the most important thing is how your customer sees your brand. And I think that's the best way you can future-proof, better than any ad tech you could buy or any technology or campaign you could launch. So it's a focus on customer experience and having the right measurement in place. Hi there, over here. Hey. I was just wondering if you could comment upon um, how we're using digital technology to enhance the in-store experience at Canadian Tire, particularly for customers that walk into those stores and have a difficult time finding what they're looking for. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, not specifically my domain, so it's not the, something I'm going to be able to directly answer for you. All is to say is that when we think of the in-store experience that a customer has, we have to be solution-minded with how we go about it. I think that the danger sometimes is to look at, um, I'd say, the next shiny object. And, I, I, and when you think of a customer or a store that you've been into and you see a big rollout of something that's new and it's shiny, does it actually address fundamentally what's going on with the consumer and their need at that exact specific moment? That's about all I have to say on that topic. It's not directly my area, but as long as it addresses a need, sure. Hey, uh, regarding the uh, last click attribution rant, which I appreciated, um, how have you guys actually like broached those conversations with um, decision makers or executives who may not be marketing specialists who you know look at the numbers and may just want to put everything into the lowest cost per click search channel because that's like the clear ROI um, versus you know having those conversations of funding something that's a bit trickier to measure. It's like the most dangerous thing, right? Like you actually give like there's only thing worse than like no analytics is bad analytics. Um, and so my perspective on that is so my background is um, I'm not necessarily like a native digital person. I came, I was at McDonald's and I did marketing analytics. So I was looking at a lot of 
um, incrementality studies. So we would always want to understand what the incremental effect was of menu changes, of programs that we would put in the market, anything like that. Take the same approach with marketing. Testing something. Maybe you have A-B testing. Maybe it's a geo-based. And you actually see what happens when you start to change variables. And you start to, say, or maybe if you're, you know, you have first party data and you want to actually understand. So I'm thinking omnichannel right now. If you're a retailer, you might need omnichannel data. If you're a pure play, you could literally just do an A B test. If you come back and say, the only variable, so I put it through a scientific mass, method, the only variables we changed were X and Y, let's say a channel, a channel mix or something like that, and all else was the same. Don't try to then pull it back to the channel level, count the total till and say, how much incremental money did we make in the market where we ran that campaign or where we changed our channel mix versus the markets that did not? If you put it through the proper method, you should be able to get to a return on ad spend that's actually incremental that you can attribute to the changes that you made in your campaign. So then what you maybe come back to do is say, hey, remember that thing that showed up like 30 cents on a last click basis? It has an $8 return on ad spend. And by the way, it's incremental to the business. So it's actually going to grow the business not just take away or capture a, some other last click. So that's what I would do, and that's, that's what we've done. And so a lot of the growth we get is we get smarter spending our money because we actually understand what it's doing for us. Sure. I think, I think what, you, what it comes down to is knowing your customer. There are certainly customers that are going to be more value driven, and those customers you should speak to with a value message. I think some customers are going to be less about price sensitivity, and they're going to be more interested in what's new. So why would I take someone who's interested in what's new, maybe doesn't mind paying full price or will pay for a luxury brand, I'm not going to show them a bottom basement price. So it comes down to your ability to understand your customer base, have the right segmentation in place, the technology required to then say, for those type of customers, I want to show this, and I want to be always on. And if I get a signal from that customer, then I'm going to make sure that that customer gets the right type of message for the type of consumer that they are, versus a customer that maybe is more brand driven, or value driven, I should say, where you're going to then, in those cases, sure, then you can show them the red dress. But I think you, it comes down to understanding the motivations and the drivers of your consumer base and making sure that the messages that you're putting in front of them are commiserate with their, um, with their sort of motivations or key drivers. I hope that answered it. Mike. Sorry, I worked with Mike like 14 years ago. You better be nice. I mean, I, I think it's critical. I think Triangle for us was, I mean, we have one of the, I mean, I don't know the stat, but we got to have one of the oldest loyalty programs in existence with Canadian Tire Money. And then you see, how do you actually bring that to life in the digital era? How, does, how do you create a brand where the customer can understand the value that it actually delivers for them? And how do you then put that across our family of companies to actually make it, you know, beneficial for everyone? So. When you think of the digital business, from a cu customer perspective, we're able to then start to personalize offers for our customers through the Triangle app or through the Canadian Tire app or your email or whatever channel you want to engage with us on. You're going to get relevant offers. They're going to add value for you. And to what I talked about earlier, when you have owned channels and you understand who you're talking to, you can hopefully show them the right type of message that drives the most incremental behavior, whether it be brand-driven, transactional, whatever that is that customer needs, it's given us a huge um, tool to be able to help deliver on a better customer experience uh, that we just didn't have before. So it's been massive for us. We're lucky to have it.
you very much. That was amazing. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to just, yeah, round of applause for sure. Awesome. What an incredible lineup of speakers. I just want to give a round of all of our speakers today. They were just so awesome. So, hey guys, do you have an expertise in marketing technology or digital and you want to speak at Marketing TO? Please call us. Just fill out a form at TechTO. We're always looking for speakers. And we're all looking for points of view. And we are excited to have the broadest voices. And we want lots of people to connect with us because that's part of what we do. That's the best part of Marketing TO. I think that's my last slide. Um, I want to thank Shopify again. Thank you, Shopify. You guys were amazing. Thank you for hosting us. Our next Marketing TO is in February. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you guys so much. It was great. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming.